life has been? Your life has been out of control. Out of control. You're confused. You're confused. Well, you know, we're always, you know, we always got, you know, one of us got always got something to say about the other person, the other team. So, you know, I gotta keep it, uh, you know, consistent. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome to Great City, everybody. Uh, we're going to have a great service for y'all today. Um, I hope people have a great game uh, today also. So, um, please stand for prayer. <coughs> Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for uh, the blessings you have given us this week, Lord. But we ask you to continue to bless us, Lord. Continue to strengthen us, Lord. Continue to guide us in everything we do. Lord, we ask that you just forgive us, Lord, for any wrongdoing that we have done, Lord. Uh, if we don't know what we have done, Lord, please bring it to our light, Lord, so we can correct it, Lord. But we ask that you just continue to bless this service, Lord. Uh, bless all those that's involved, Lord. Bless our pastor, Lord. Bless the person that is speaking today, Lord. Uh, strengthen them, Lord. Strengthen uh, their, their, their uh, spirit, Lord. Uh, rejuvenate, Lord. Because if we know, Lord, that given out that what they have, Lord, sometimes need to be rejuvenated, Lord, because they give their all, Lord. So, Lord, we ask for rejuvenation, Lord, uh, for those, Lord, that, that do your work, Lord. But we ask for, for rest, Lord, because uh, for those that have been working and working and working, Lord, and, and don't sit down sometimes and rest, Lord. So we ask that you give them the, the foresight to, to see when they need rest, Lord, to sit down, Lord, and rejuvenate, Lord. So, Lord, we ask that you just uh, continue to strengthen us, Lord. Bless our leaders, Lord. Bless our deacons, Lord. Uh, bless uh, uh, the, the speakers, Lord, and, and the associate pastors, Lord. And just continue to use us, Lord. Use us, Lord. Lord, to put your word out, Lord. Put your word out in the communities, Lord. Put your word out in, 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 uh, at work, Lord, and with our family, Lord. Lord, we ask this as you continue to bless the, the fathers and mothers and, and grandmothers and, and all those that have to deal with children, Lord. Just continue to guide them and help them have patience, Lord, and have a love, Lord, and also have discipline, Lord, to, to teach their children, Lord. Lord, we just honor you and praise you in Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. Amen.
Hello, Christ Center. Christ Center. My name is McCain Griffin, and I will be reading a mission statement. To reach our world with the gospel while teaching our members to walk in obedience to the word of God, study it and to become qualified workmen, skillfully using it in personal living and the way of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, Christ Center. Good morning. Good morning. We'll be taking the scriptures from the Psalms 34. Uh, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make this boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with him, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked, at, they looked at him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him. Mm -hmm. May the Lord have a reason for that pastor to be in his word. Amen. All right, next we're going to have um, prayer. So I, I just want to um, get, get a little back to how we were uh, before, before the pandemic. Um, as we get ready for prayer with this, uh, with the next song, I just want y'all to know the altar is open. It will always be open every Sunday when this, when this song comes up uh, for prayer. The altar is open. If you need some prayer, come up during that song, um, and the deacon will pray with y'all. All right, just wanted to let y'all know that because I've noticed that we're, we're not doing that. So, and you know. Look to Christ. <laughs>
We pray, Lord God, for the pastor of this church, Lord God. He and his wife, Lord God. We pray for them. And we pray, Lord God, that you will build them up and strengthen them. That no harm will come to them, Lord. No hurt or harm come out of their dwelling, Lord. Their families dwelling, Lord God. We pray for our daughters, our own boys, our own households, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that it will always be you. That you will be always high and lifted up, Lord. We pray for this city. This city that we always call a city of brotherly love and sisterly affection, but sometimes did not show us neither one. That sometimes show that we are full of murder and we're full of darkness, Lord God. We pray that the dark places be made light and the crooked places be made straight, Lord God. Lord God, that any request, any prayer request that's in this body right now, that you hear it according to your, according to the riches and glory that are in Christ Jesus. Now, Lord God, we turn, we pray for the man servant who will be delivering the word to you, Lord God. We ask you that, that he can hide behind you so that his voice becomes entwined in your voice, Lord God. So that his will becomes entwined in your will. And he preaches the word to us that's most impactful that, Lord God, we can all understand and rejoice. So now, Lord God, we turn this sofa over to you. Have your way. We turn it over to the Holy Spirit. Have your way in this service and in our lives. Yes. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
Father, we thank you for the prayers that are going up. We pray all these, cover all these prayers in the blood of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Don't, don't tell Pastor I wouldn't mind it. <laughs> I think you're going to tell him. I think you're going to tell him. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now um, the time has come for preaching. And this brother, the strong brother, you know, this is a, this is a strong brother. You know how you can tell a strong brother? You can tell a strong brother when he don't tell you how strong he is. He lets other people tell you how strong he is. This is a strong brother. He's strong in the word. He's strong in Christ. He's here to deliver a word to us that we sorely need. I know a lot of us think we're in great shape. You know, we're in great shape. We got everything going on. But this brother's here to deliver a word to us that not only are we going to keep to ourselves, but we're going to share. Because we are just not self-minded, but we are minded towards others. We're looking to others. So when this brother comes, please stand attention because he is a serviceman. Give him a call and listen to what he has to say. We want to. I want to welcome our brother, the Reverend Brian T. Boy Ken. Yeah. 
Christ-centered church of God, and we did say Christ-centered, where Christ is the center, and this is the church of God. Amen. Not the church of anyone else. This is the church of God. The church that God has ordained for worship and what? And for celebration. So um, again, like I said, I will be going through a lot of scripture today, and if you want that, I'll give it to you. I'll, I'll give it to you. And I have to deal with my wife's computer. We just heard that song. He yes. said, "Greatest is faithfulness." Correct. Yes. One of the things that's been that's been on my heart these past past couple of uh, I guess you say past few weeks is the promises of God. Yes. It's always been the promises the promises of God. God makes many promises, many promises throughout the, throughout Scripture, and uh, and even if we if we read. Exodus 6, 6 through 8. Here's a promise. And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, as God Almighty. But my name, Lord, I was not known to them. Excuse me. I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, in which they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. And we hear covenant. Start thinking relationship. Think promises. 
Therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give it to you as a heritage. I am the Lord. So Moses spoke thus to the children of Israel, but they did not heed Moses because of anguish of spirit and of cruel bondage. Here's another promise by God. We, we like reciting this one. This is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Let us pray. Father, in your great name, we give you thanks and praise. Today, another great day. We give you the honor and praise, and we thank you for the lives that we have, and not only... Not only do we have these lives, but we have life in us that we may go forth and speak of your goodness and your, and your graciousness. Teach us now all things that are necessary for us to worship you and to honor you. But not just that, but also to think in an other way to those who may not know you, for those who are skeptical or doubtful of who you are and what you do. May our lips be continue be filled with your word that speaks your truth that speaks of you, for you have gifted us and you have granted us the opportunity to go forth with the good news, with the gospel, to share throughout this world. And may this time we have right now, may it not be wasted, and may it not, may it not fall away, but may we take in what is being said and use it to help those who are in desperate need of help and who are in desperate need of salvation. So we give you honor and a praise today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Again, I said, uh, God is a God of promises. And he has promised many promises. But you know, of all the promises that God has given, there is one promise that trumps all of them. There is one, one promise that trumps all of them. I wrote it like this. However, there is no greatest promise than the promise of redemption. Since the fall of man, there is a need for salvation, a need for redemption. That redemption, where does it come from? It comes from the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I titled this message, His Will Be Done. Mm -hmm. His Will Be Done. He, and I just read that scripture. God says, I will take you from bondage in Egypt. And I will. In other words, there is no one else. And I'm going to get to that because you probably think, probably heard that before. I'm going to come to that part again. There is no other salvation. God is our salvation. And he has given us his son. Because we are all in need of a savior. And we all need a salvation. We can't save ourselves. We know we can't save ourselves. Amen. But because of the grace of God and the love of God, he has given us that salvation. That is through his son, Jesus Christ. You've heard of Jesus before, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So here are our key verses. Luke 24, verses 25 to 27, and Luke 44 and 45. And I will read. Then he said to them, O foolish one, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Verse 30, 44. Then he said to them, this is Jesus. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spake to you while I was with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scripture. Now, Jesus is reading through the Hebrew Bible. There is no New Testament at this time. It's only Old Testament. So when Jesus went through the scriptures, he said, all of that in the Old Testament speaks of me. Right. Jesus was saying, if you want to find me, you can find me in the Old Testament because it 
points to me. Hey, no chapters in the Hebrew Bible. No verses in the Hebrew Bible. That all that came later on. But Jesus opened up the scriptures and he showed them from the prophets, the Psalms, the writings, all of these things. That when you see that, you will see me. Because it is all testifying of me. Amen. The scriptures speak of him. Now, what I want to do. How, does this, how do the scriptures speak of him? May I help you find out how it works? Okay, good. And we are in the garden. So the Lord God said to Satan, this is Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 through 15. So the Lord God said to, said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field, on your belly you shall go. And you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and, he, and you shall bruise his heel. That's the promise. That's the prophecy. Do you want to, should I go through scriptures and show you where that is fulfilled? I don't care what you say. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 21. Now the birth of Jesus was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Not of the husband, but of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to try this without my glasses. That Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will do what? He will save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 21. Oh, but remember, this Jesus that we're talking about, there's more to it. He does. He crushes the head of Satan. How does he do it? I will read it to you. Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples went away to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. You, we read that, right? Satan's head, the serpent, his head will be crushed. And his and and the the sea, his heel will be bruised. But you see, as we read from that scripture, that seed will be victorious. Because although it looked bleak at that time, he rose again. Jesus rose again from the grave. And not only that, he also said to, said to his disciples, and he says to us, All power has been given into me into heaven and to earth. Go and make disciples, and I will be with you. In other words, the power that I have in me, I now give it to you as well. Amen. I now give it to you. For I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus hangs lifelessly on the cross. However, God has the final say. Through Jesus' resurrection, the head of the serpent is crushed. Victory over sin and Satan is fulfilled. Amen. 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 Victory over sin and Satan is fulfilled. Oh, but you know what? I'm not done. There's more. Romans 5, 12 through 21. Fulfillment. Therefore, just as through one man entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sin, for unto the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, 
even over those who had not sinned, according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, was a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense, for if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which, which came through the one who sinned, for the judgment which came from came from one offense resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as through one, man, one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might, be, might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Amen. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might, might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. You see that, right? Promises of God. God has promised all of us salvation. We can't do it. We can't do it. I know we're wearing eagle stuff today. Eagles can't save us. They can't save us. The coaches on that team, they can't save us. Definitely can't be saved by the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Definitely not. That will never work. Only through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, who was prophesied and promised all the way back in the garden, the garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 3. All the way back there, the promise was made and the promise was fulfilled. The serpent's head has been crushed. Why? Because Jesus rose from the grave and he said, I have all this power. All of it. Amen. Sin and Satan were dealt a decisive blow. Mm -hmm. A decisive blow. Can I go on with some more promises of God? Right. I go on with the promise that right. because of because of because of who he has sent into this world, Amen. Jesus Christ. Can, may I? Yes, you may. Okay, here we go. Deuteronomy 18, 17 through 22. And I love this because this stumps a lot of people. And they say that um, no, Jesus was, or they say no, this is speaking of another prophet, another false prophet. But if you read it carefully, it is only Jesus. It is not anybody else. Deuteronomy 18, 17 through 22. And the Lord said to me, what they have spoken is good. And this is Moses. I will raise up from them a prophet like he said, I will. God says, I will. There we go. His will be done. His promises. I will raise up from them a prophet like you from among the brethren. <clears throat> And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. False prophets. But the prophet who, who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. I will raise up a prophet just like Moses among the brethren. Now, let's look at Moses for a second. He tried it. He tried salvation before he met God. He did slay that Egyptian, correct? Mm -hmm. He slayed an Egyptian. What happened? The people were still in bondage. It didn't work. 
Jesus was slain for our salvation and he lives today. Amen. Okay? Amen. Jesus hang on a cross. His body broken. His blood shed. Moses shed blood for the people. Jesus shed his blood for all people. The Hebrews, the Israelites, were not saved. They were still in bondage. Jesus did it. And he freed all men. All we have to do is call on him. Repent from our sins and call upon him. And we will be saved. So what are these prophets? These prophets will, will speak the truth, the truth of God, and speak no other. So that's the promise. That's the prophecy. Do you want the fulfillment? Do you want the fulfillment of this promise? Okay, here we go. I appreciate that. John 14, 7 to 11. If you had known me, this is Jesus speaking to Philip. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and, and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to me, to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? Listen now. Listen. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the sakes of the works themselves. There's your fulfillment. Mm -hmm. That prophet that is to come, that is to speak God's word with Jesus. Jesus said, I do not speak of my own authority, but only the words that God has put in my mouth. The Father has put in my mouth. Indeed. God says, I, I will. Raise up a prophet. That prophet was Jesus Christ. Amen. Going on. A little bit more to this. Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. <coughs> Someone else just testified. Jesus was a prophet. That's the prophet that came to speak the word, to speak the truth of God. And that was it. Amen? Amen. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 33. Get your communion ready. If you don't have your communion cups, get them now. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 33. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant, which they broke, though I was a husband to them, <coughs> I'm having trouble with money, can I says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in, in the day that I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant, which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. 
After those days, says the Lord, I will, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin, I will remember no more. That's the promise. Here comes the fulfillment. Raise, 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 please. Let's prepare for communion. When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourself. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. That is the fulfillment of the new covenant. That is the fulfillment of the new covenant. God says, I will write, the, I will write these laws in their hearts. No longer will they be on tablets of stone. They will be in the, the flesh of the heart. Let me show you again how that promise was fulfilled. Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 through 3. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods fulfill, uh, before me. Fulfillment, Acts 4, 8 through 12. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, If we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what, mean, what, what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you. This is the stone which was rejected by, by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Fulfillment. Remember when we read the, that, that commandment, it says, I am the Lord your God. Remember that part, right? More fulfillment. John 8, 54 through 59. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known me, but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I shall, you, ah, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. You got to understand, remember, God says, when Moses asked God, What would I tell him your name is? God says, You tell him, I am that I am. This in the Greek where it says I am, those Greek words are ego aini, which in other words is Jesus is saying, I am, I am. You understand that correctly, right? Jesus is saying, I am, I am. Then he took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus said, hid himself and went out to the went out of the temple, going through the midst of them. As, and so passed by. They they pick up stones to stone him because he has called himself God. 
That's why they picked up stones to stone me. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. There is no other name to be saved but Jesus Christ. I am, I am. It all comes together. There's that promise. God says he promised to save his people. Jesus Christ is our salvation. One more commandment. Why well, do you have two more commandments? Exodus 20, verses 4 through 6. You shall make now, you shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. Now I could have put something else. I could have put I could have written John, was it 14, 21, I believe it is, when Jesus said, He that had my commandments, loveth me, and he that loved me. I, I can't remember how it goes. And I and and the Father will love you, and we will man and he will manifest himself to you. But I didn't put that in it. As you can see, I just messed it up. So I kept it down anyway. <laughs> Even if I read it, I really felt like I was going to mess it up. So I just kept it out of there. He didn't have my commandments. Okay, never mind. Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 through 18. I think we just learned this in Bible study, didn't we? we our, our teacher, I'm not going to say his name, but it, it rhymes with Raven Evans. He taught, and he taught the uh, Bible study that Thursday in Colossians 1. Colossians 1, chapter, um, Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 through 18. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Now, when we say firstborn, we're not saying Jesus was born, okay? It's everything that comes with being the firstborn, okay? Everything that comes with being the firstborn. The firstborn over all creation. Remember what Jesus said. All power has been given unto me in the heaven and the earth. For by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are in heaven and that are on earth. Visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. John 14, 9, Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? We want to know what the image of God looks like? We have it. This is Jesus Christ Himself. Jesus Himself. But you know, I got one more commandment. Is that okay? Okay. This is a simple one. It's a simple one. It's a simple one. You shall not steal. Ephesians 1 13 and 14. In Him you also trusted. After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Why should we steal when we have a much greater inheritance? Why should we steal when we have a much greater and greater inheritance? We don't need to steal. You've, uh, you've, I, I know Next Gen have heard me say it, but there, there are different ways to steal from someone. You can steal from someone's financial, take their money. You can steal from someone intellectually, take their ideas. You can steal from someone physically, take their life. You can steal someone relationally. Don't be friends with him. Don't be friends with her. Don't claim him as your man. Don't claim him as your woman. I'm all that you need. And you can steal from someone spiritually. I know. I've had someone do that to me. I know it. it. Made me feel like I was lower than love. You can take someone's spiritual life from them just by being a spiritual tyrant. 
So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, no need to steal. God is good. We don't have to look anyplace else for our satisfaction. We find it right there in Him. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, listen to this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We have that inheritance. Jesus said he will be with us. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. You know what it means by being sealed? Let me explain it. Okay. In ancient times, he would write a letter and then they would put a piece of wax on there and then the king or whoever the ruler would put a signet ring in there and it would seal it. His seal was on that document. It was authenticated. Okay? So if we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, God has put that image, his image on us and has called us authentic. Okay? Okay? And we just read in Jeremiah 31, 33, he says, I will write my laws on their hearts. That's a seal. Why? Because God's word represents his presence and it, it tells us of his character. Therefore, when we are sealed, the character of God is now in us. Okay? His character is now in the definition of character is an imprint on the soul. God's imprint is in us. And Jesus is with us everywhere we go. When we go discipling, we go evangelizing, laying hands on people, praying for them, Jesus is with us. How? Through his spirit. His spirit who guides us to all truth. So you see, again, God has made many promises throughout the Bible, throughout, through his word, and we read it. But there was one promise that he made. It was actually more than one, but it, it was still one, the one, the one promise that God has made. And that is for our salvation. That was through Jesus Christ himself. Bruising the head of the serpent. Dying on the cross for us. Sin and Satan dealt a heavy blow, a decisive blow there on the cross. And then it was fulfilled by, in three days, Jesus rose from the grave. After that some time, he ascended to the Father at his right hand. Yes, he does have power. But what does that say about us? We are also seated with him in heavenly places. We are seated with him. You want to know the ultimate promise of God? That promise came in, in the garden. That the serpent will bruise his head, but the seed of the woman will crush. I mean, it, let me back up. The, he will bruise his head, but the seed of the woman will crush his head. And I think I got it right. Someone can. I've been up here too long, only had four hours of sleep. <laughs> Well, I'm saying he's going to crush him. His head will be crushed. That is the promise of God. That is his will. May his will be done. Amen. 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 So again, we, we, we come and Jesus has offered his life for us. This is communion Sunday and we've already taken communion. Jesus has offered his life for us. What can we do in return? We can offer ourselves to him and what we have back to him, back to God. Thanking him for all that we have and for all that he has done. It is now offering time in the sanctuary.
restaurants and businesses, discounts, and freebies there. I, I, I utilize that for lunch time. I do it all. I do too. So, if any veterans in the house, you want to stand up? Um, thank all of for the Family and Friends Month, uh, November is Family and Friends Month, please bring someone to church. <coughs> bring, everybody bring your family, bring some friends, um, join us to services this month, and just let them um, just enjoy what we enjoy. All right? Um, then uh, Reverend uh, Dan Burnside, go and address. Um, we know we, we just want to be able to get to them. Um, I have to get at that. I need to do better. So I know other people need to do better. We need to just go out and see him, send him some cards. Um, he is at uh, the Sinus House Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, room 102, 100 East, Lancaster Ave, Wynwood, PA. Um, and if you look at any bulletin, you'll have his phone number and everything on there. Um, church activities calendar, department, and Zoe Hits, keep green. Uh, please uh, begin to prepare your activity calendars for 2024. The date to submit uh, is during the week of December 10th. You may email uh, the calendar dates to me or Sister Steve, uh, Sister, Sister Adams um, at Christ Center, I mean C Center 22COG at gmail.com. Um, when depositing your uh, offerings in the church, mail stock, please put your envelopes all the way in inside the box. Otherwise, others can remove the envelope. Your envelope. envelope. Listed below are the few uh, options for giving your tithes and offerings, offerings. You may have your financial establishment make a deduction automatically from your paycheck and have it sent directly to the church. You may drop it, um, drop it uh, directly into the church's mail slot. You may send it by postal mail. You may sign up for Giveify. Um, contact Pastor Owen uh, for further information. Also, check, in, uh, check the website for more information. Man, uh, I know uh, for, you know me with my job is sent a notice saying that open enrollment for insurances are open um, during this month in uh, December, uh, to December. Uh, Medicare is also open enrollment from October 15th to December 7th. Um, so please, if you need to do that, please get that done. Uh, no wedding anniversaries and birthdays. We have uh, November 5th. Um, uh, November, I mean, birthday between November 5th and uh, November 11th. Uh, we have Deacon Miles, birthday on the 10th. Uh, I don't see him here. Uh, please give him a call. Let him know um, he is loved. Um, also, Marine Corps birthday is. Hurrah! Hurrah! <laughs> <laughs> it is November 10th. Um, so, it's one of the Marine Corps. Uh, happy birthday, and we don't sing happy birthday in the report because I'm also in the report. We sing on the report. No. So, if uh, Brother Brian want to come up here and help me with this, yeah. I don't know if they want to hear me. <laughs> if we don't sing happy birthday, you ready? Oh man, it'd be nice if we had some, some music before. Yeah, I know we are. Right. We are, we got each other. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, this is what we do. Everyone go like this. Where we could take a gun in the 
Oh, well, Sister Steve is in the film world today. Okay. So in your in your prayer, I'm going to pray for her too. So in your prayers, just remember Sister Steve, she's not feeling well today. Okay. Everyone, please rest on your feet. So my benediction is this. Remember that all, or wherever you go, no matter what you do, God has made a promise to all of us. He has made covenants with, with all of us. And then when you come, that means there's a relationship. Therefore, if there's a relationship, God has always said, I will not break my covenant, not one time ever. And that's good news. Because we know that we will do these things on a much unneeded basis. God in his faithfulness, his covenant faithfulness, he keeps his word. And he kept his word when he said we, he will save us from our sins. And he sent his one and only begotten son who died on the cross. His lifeless body was on the cross for us. But the good news again is he rose in three days. Therefore, God, God makes his promises and therefore we can trust him. And let us pray. Glorious Father, in your matchless name, we give you the honor and praise you so deserve. What is it that makes us want to worship you and honor you? Well, there, but it is because we trust and we obey you for you always, at all times, keep your word. We have had hard times. We have tough times many times. But you have always been there for us no matter what. Your word does not change. Therefore, your character does not change. And therefore, your promises will never change. Help us in our minds and our hearts that we will change. That we will not be of this world, but we will be about, about your business and your business alone. And my prayer right now is for those who are here, that as they leave this great place, that they will not forget your word, and therefore will not forget you that your word will continually be in their mouths. And they will speak your truth just as Jesus, our prophet, our priest, and our king has done. May these people here right now do the same. And I thank you, Father, for the life that you, the life that you have given us. May we live our lives according to your will and your will alone. We ask a special blessing upon our First Lady, Sister Stevens. We understand she is not feeling well today, but because of you, all is well. Because of you, we can look to you for our lives, for our health, and for our strength, and she can look to you for her life, and for her health, and for her strength. We thank you and we praise you. We honor you and we adore you. We magnify your great and holy name, for there is no name other than your name. There is no name above your name. So therefore, we will look to the heavens, which comes our help. Our help comes from you, our Lord. We thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Greet someone in Jesus' name.